Hi, in today's video, I wanna do a quick taster first impressions overview of the new Noiseite Warp uh, Oscillator module, which I was recently sent by Noiseite to, to do a video on. I've had my eye on this since Superbooth earlier this year, and I was very excited to get it. It's, the sound out of it is quite spectacular. And like most things from Noiseite, like everything from Noiseite, it's really, really well made. Like the quality, the build quality, the finish quality on the panel is outstanding. And I had covered the Quasar in a previous video, and so I had high hopes for this module. It hasn't disappointed so far. Now, I haven't gone deep into the manual yet. I haven't kind of had a chance to really dig in yet on how this works. So this is not a full tutorial. This is just going to be me experimenting and kind of showing the basics of what I've learned after two or three days of just playing with this module. No doubt you will have tons of questions. Please fire them away in the comments down below. I'll try and answer them in the full video. Uh, with, with that, let's dive in and start patching this and playing around with some of the presets. Okay, so the first thing that'll strike you when you power it on is this big screen in the middle, and you might think to yourself, oh no, this is one of those menu diving modules. This is actually a very controllable module using all of these knobs. So just about everything you see on a menu here, and it's easily navigated using these two controllers, can be accessed or modulated or mapped to these knobs here. And in addition, you've got these CV inputs down here, which are allow you to insert external CV, which we'll do using a you know, joystick and, and a lapse of sauce here as well. So the first thing I would say, don't get put off thinking, oh great, it's gonna be a menu diving module and I'm not gonna get anywhere with it. The second thing is uh, you can control it over both CV, control voltage and MIDI. So here we have the Warp X expander. Now the Warp X gives you a breakout to trigger all four voices individually. So it's a four voice module. And each of the voices can be triggered individually. You can have it in monophonic mode, it can be polyphonic or it can respond to MPE. Or you can send it MIDI. Now it's a MIDI TRS B adapter. So this is a TRS A to B adapter cable here coming out of the back of my Oxy-1. So the Oxy-1 is just going to be doing the basic sequencing. Now, in the end of the day, all we get are two stereo outs. And this has a built-in envelope and it has a built-in set of high and low pass filters. So it's very much a self-contained voice. So all I've done here at the end is added a, a delay with the mimeophone, which I'm clocking from Oxy-1. So we'll, we'll introduce some delay lines and then mix in a bit of drums just to keep the beat. But you can set this up to be an oscillator. It can just be a basic oscillator, a wavetable. You can navigate through the wavetables and you could put your own filter and envelope at the end of it. We can, we can look at that a little bit later. So when you load a preset, you're loading up all of the predefined um, settings. For it. So let's load up a factory preset here, Bowser Bass, okay? Now I'm gonna sequence this over MIDI, but you could just as easily sequence it over uh, CV using the Volproctu input and the trigger input, which would trigger the internal envelope. So we just go back there, click the back button. Very similar user interface to the Quasar. Very well implemented, I have to say, for such uh, like a deep module, I did not get lost in menus. They were all fairly logically laid out. What I found is, we just start the sound playing. As you navigate through the harmonic spectra here, you get different sounds. You can also adjust the depth of modulation here and the speed of the modulation. There's two built-in LFOs and envelopes and VCAs. And you can map the warp. You hear the sound changing there. And we can detune it. And you see the detune level here as I turn it up. This control here lets me Shift up and down by octaves, press it semitones, and fine tuning. So you can just map that to exactly like if you're trying to get this in tune with something else. If we go into the warp here, this is where we see fil our built in filters and envelopes. So we have a low pass and a high pass filter in series. And then we have the basically the CV mapping for what's called warp effects. Now, the way I think of this is you can map these, these knobs to practically any parameter in here. So this is mapping, for example, uh, the warp input to the pitch bend, to wave folding, to the overdrive, and I'm not too sure what Redux does yet. I'll have to get to that. Same and in here, you adjust the oscillator mix. So you're adjusting each voice, what type of oscillator it has, 
what uh, is the mix of the different oscillators, what are they coming in at. Finally, we've got a very competent mod matrix in here. Envelope one goes to the internal VCA. So when I hit play, this is, you hear me adjusting the attack there. This is the envelope that is being sent to the VCA for uh, the actual main voice output. And we can also adjust the mapping. So for example, this shows that the SPD or speed control maps to adjust the attack amount. So I could modulate that with, for example, an LFO. And this little dial here, which is very well done, shows where this knob is. And the, the module actually does a really good job of reading the current position of the knobs. I, I didn't find myself getting confused. You know, sometimes when you have menu-based modules, then you're having to catch up where the knob is or there's a big jump. But this one actually goes, nope, I know exactly where the knob is when you came to me, when you came to this screen. So kudos to Noizai for implementing that one very well. It, it's very intuitive. Again, like I could hit play and I could manually change the mapping of SPD, you see it here on the screen, to the decay amount. Pluck your sound. and a, a longer sound. So you see the mob mapping is very straightforward. And because you've got this lovely graphical display, it's very easy to see exactly what you're achieving. And then we've got two LFOs, LFO one and two. You've got frequency, you've got the waveform type, you've got all your classic LFOs. You know, it's, it's an LFO. If you've mapped LFOs inside things before, you know exactly what you're doing here. You set the, the phase, you can set it to be single shot or triggered or looping. Uh, same with LFO two. Um, and this is where, I don't know what we're doing here, mod source amp page. And this is where we do mapping of keys to velocities. And this is where, I'm not too sure what these pages are. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna skip back. I haven't got into some of that stuff. And frankly, you probably, unless you're going deep into sound design, you probably don't need to either. Let's load up another preset here. So the lovely thing is this actually came on the little SD card with a ton of presets. And I, I mean, an awful lot that really, you could just take this, use the presets, and off you go, and not worry about it. Um, Panic Girl did some, Anatole Locker did some, Sasha Ketterlin did some, and indeed Noise Out themselves have factory presets. There's a Knit preset. Let's go down and take another look here. Formantis. Okay, probably a formant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to map this, uh, I'm going to patch this IntelliGel Planar joystick here into the X and Y position. Now I turn that, see there I'm navigating through the, the sound changes as I'm navigating through the harmonic spectrum. Over here, different sounds. Now let me introduce more modulation. You see there how the, the little lights are dancing around, flying through the galaxy. Reminds me of close encounters of a third kind actually. As I move the joystick, the modulation continues. Okay, so that's kind of that's how we've mapped these right now in this preset. I mean, a different preset, you could map them differently. So we could go up here now to modulation. There's the we go to say warp. Now here's the open up the filter, so I can do that. We'll bring in a bit more resonance. And now you notice here that the warp control is mapped to the low pass filter. And so, look, it shows exactly where the knob position is for warp is displayed on the screen. It's smart enough to know the knob is there right now. So now warp. Look at that, I can open and close the filter now because that's mapped. Let's patch that. There's a warp input. Let's patch it to this uh, looping LFO over here from Carve. Maybe drop it down. Bring in some delay. Now I did notice occasionally, 
some of the MIDI was getting stuck, MIDI stuck notes. And I don't know if that's just a firmware issue here. This is an early version of uh, Warp and Warp X and needs an update. But basically, if I was using MIDI, sometimes it would get stuck. So what I did was I just would cycle the MIDI type here using that knob back to monophonic and, and affix the stuck notes. Here's a plucky sound, so we just press to load it. So let's go take a look at the envelope there. There's the filter. Of course, you could also make chord stabs, and we could put these into polyphonic mode. I load up another preset. This is stabs one on the factory presets. And I'm gonna have this in blue. I'm gonna set this to be polyphonic, and I have a different sequence set up here. And let's take a listen. And there's the high pass filter. Move down the filtering. Bring up the drive. A little bit heft. There we go. Oh yeah, that feels good. Let's go back to our low pass. Drop the resin. Oh, there we go. That's got a bit of bite to it, hasn't it? And warp here is mapped to the low pass cutoff. So we're going to turn warp. fun just playing around with the different sound possibilities here. Well, that's fun. That's just a whole heap of fun. What we're doing is just playing around with presets, exploring different mappings of CV, um, patching in external CV sources on top of the existing uh, MIDI notes that are going in. Right now, there does not seem to be any MIDI CC implementation, at least not that I could find. Could be there, but I just haven't found it yet. Because certainly I would love to be able to modulate some of these things using a MIDI CC from my Oxy-1 or any other controller you may have. A couple more sound examples, this time from the Anatol Locker uh, set. This is Bow Bass, so we load this guy up here. And uh, we'll go up and take a look at what he does. Let me turn up the resolu resonance a little bit there, just to get a different... It's very playable, so don't be put off by the, the screen. All this, all I'm doing is just patching stuff in. Maybe I'll do the same again with warp. So that's kind of a, a taster. That's all I'm gonna say this is, a taster for this module. It's it's a not in any way, shape or form a deep dive. I've yet to get to that level of detail. There's a lot to figure out here. Um, though I don't actually think you need to become an expert on spectral sound design and additive harmonics to use this module. I think it's actually very playable straight out of the box, plug it in, turn it on, hit the presets, start playing and enjoy what you hear. So kudos to Noise for making a very powerful module that also solves one of the big problems of powerful modules, which is how do you play it straight out of the box? And I think they did a good job here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments as always. Uh, early exploration, so I'm sure there's tons I forgot to cover here and you may have many questions, but I'm happy to try and go answer any of your questions. 
uh, and cover them in a future video. Thanks for watching.